recording. Um, okay, so first, of course, I would like to say uh, thank you for uh, coming in and of course, remote students for tuning in. Because normally, um, right now, um, it would already be winter break in the, I would say, normal semesters. Okay. Um, so this, this is a schedule for our last week. Um, so today, uh, so today and Wednesday we'll learn some inexact method, which in practice we, we use. So in practice, actually we don't use Newton or we don't use line search. So we will use inexact meaning uh, we'll use less computational expensive approach. So we're applying a mathematician. So we'll use a less expensive approach to achieve almost the same performance. Thinking you guys are buying computer, right? So you, you don't wanna buy the most expensive one. It's not, uh, I would say price performance efficient. So when you look at computers, you wanna buy one has a very balanced price and performance. You know, right? So you don't want to buy the most expensive one. You want to buy some, like uh, uh, I would say, median range, but uh, uh, but has also a very good performance. So this is what uh, uh, we're trying to achieve today. So we're trying to learn inexact method. Okay. And before uh, we move on to uh, present the exact method, let's uh, first recall what's a exact method. So what is exact? So what, what is exactness, but uh, pardon my English, all right? So for example, in the line search example, in the line search example, what we did several weeks ago when we derived the line search, what we did was called an exact line search. The reason is because we solved this minimization problem. So such that we choose a step size such that our function achieves the minimum along our search direction at the kth iteration. Okay, we solved this problem. And uh, uh, PK, so let me use a new panel. So PK is our negative gradient and is our search direction. So uh, So in CG, this formula is much, much more complicated. Uh, but uh, PK is still our search direction. CG, we have to do some Q orthogonalization. Um, so in the line search, in the line search, we, we sorry, this is alpha. And uh, um, so we basically, we solve this uh, uh, minimization problem. We choose alpha so that our function achieves the minimum possible value along our search direction, okay? So if we look at a picture, okay? And we denote, we denote So let me check if the remote students have no problem. Okay, good. So let's denote this phi of alpha equal this, okay? So phi of alpha is basically um, the function value along this line. So it's, it's a function value, all the function values along this uh, search direction. So, um, I mean, it, it's possible that, uh, um, first of all, in real life application, F may not be quadratic. So, Throughout the second half of the quarter of the semester, we were dealing with quadratic F, which means F 
So this is like a toy model. So a toy model, so our F is one half X transpose Q, X subtract B transpose X. And Q is a symmetric and positive matrix. That, that's our toy model. Why, why we call it a toy model is because it's too nice. For that model, we can solve this exactly. We can get exact formula for alpha for general functions. For example, even in our homework that was due last night, the Beal function, um, solving this problem actually is somewhat prohibitively in, in, inexpensive because it's a nonlinear equation. And uh, uh, solving that actually is equi almost equivalent of uh, getting to the minimizer. So even for one step, okay. So, I mean, comparing with some uh, state of art um, inexact method, solving the step for one iteration is prohibitively difficult. So let me, let me draw some uh, possible graph for, for phi alpha, okay. All right. So when, uh, when uh, so the horizontal axis is not X, it's, it's alpha, all right. So, and this is, uh, um, this is our phi alpha. So these are the possible uh, function value uh, along this line, okay. And alpha, when alpha, um, when alpha is zero, uh, this is our, so phi of zero equals f of xk, which is a function value at the current iteration. So this is, uh, this is uh, the current iterations function value. So we, this is our starting point, all right? And uh, we search a positive alpha, and uh, to avoid confusion, let me uh, erase the negative part, but uh, essentially we do this search, is we march from this point. And uh, uh, we go through like a positive, possible positive alpha so that uh, hopefully we'll reach the minimum possible point, which is here, okay? Global min of phi alpha. So if we do a line search, the true solution to the exact line search would be here, okay? And uh, So, and let's recall, how did we do? So, uh, so recall. I mean, so uh, this lecture, so for those of you guys who are in remote, um, I would say uh, this lecture, or, or you guys here, um, this lecture is more philosophical than mathematical. So, um, I would say, so we're discussing like uh, some mathematical methods we learned if they are realistic in real life. For example, recall when we solve, so for, uh, for this problem, for this quadratic functions minimization problem, we can solve this problem exactly. So let me name this uh, problem star. So star can be solved exactly by acknowledging the fact that the function we try to minimize is a quadratic function. So if we take derivative and we set it to be zero, 
bam, and we got to the minimum because it's quadratic. So it, that's a very important. So it's a positive quadratic function. Can be solved by, so we denote this, we denote this by phi alpha. So we denote this by phi alpha. And star, problem star can be solved by simply taking derivative to be zero. Okay. So that 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 was uh, that was in our toy model case. So it's like a physicist that says, okay, so now we are in a vacuum and we're in uh, say at uh, Celsius minus 270, and now we begin our experiment. Okay, so it's something like that. It, it's, I would say, um, this is like uh, what physicists call the lab condition. So it's for the toy model. Now, if we look at the real case, I mean, this is not even real case. This is just uh, what I copy from textbook. And real life, things can get much, much more complicated than this, especially in those uh, large machine learning applications. Your function is super weird. So, now let's look at this. Okay, so we start our line search. We, we start here and we match. So this is most li likely an inflection point. So it's an inflection point because the function changes from, so this, uh, the second derivative changes from uh, negative to positive, all right? And um, of course it's a critical point uh, the first derivative is zero. So it's an inflection point. It's most likely it's a second derivative is zero. First derivative is also zero. So we got here, right? It's not even close to the global minimum. And then we're lucky. Okay, so we, uh, we reach actually a local minimum. The derivative is zero, right? So the derivative is zero, but then say, but then you say, okay, we're at a local minimum. So then you guess, I would say, so I guess, okay. So I'm, I'm not satisfied with this local minimum. Um, what do I do? Okay. So then we march back on and <laughs> the function value actually starts to increase. To, to start to increase. And then we hit another inflection point here, okay? We say, oh, at this point, the derivative is zero again. Let's try search further because our function value increases, but then we hit local max. And the function value even is higher than, than what's uh, where we began, okay? So, and after, and here we'll have an inflection point again, okay? And then we hit our global maximum. So as we can see, the line search. So using this, using this figure, I mean, this figure is just a, it's another toy model. It's not in real life. Real life is much, much more complicated than this. Um, the morality of, from this example is, uh, uh, so there's a but. Solving this, okay, so solving. Solving this. May like a uh, many, many, uh, in many situation, it will yield a unwanted situation. So unwanted step size alpha. Okay. Like I said, this, this is still a toy model. In real life, our function is much, much more complicated than that. So when, uh, when f is not convex, okay. So if it's convex, it's like, it's a quadratic, it's almost like a quadratic function if it's convex. Um, then 
we're in business if we do a line search. But if we see something like this, then it's very bad. Okay. So now, of course, the first, so the first try, so this is our first try. Our first try is to ask. So we have to find alpha such that when we search along this direction and we multiply this alpha step size to our search direction, and this search direction, again, this search direction right now is negative gradient. So think it in the simple case. So not our conjugate gradient case. It's a, so think in the simple case, this search direction is just a negative gradient. At least we should require after we match in that search direction, our function value is less than the function value at the current iteration. So, I mean, this is a, this is a, um, so this is a, um, like a, a, um, a reasonable, like we say, a reasonable, like a assumption or say requirement for the step size. Okay. So we could add this alpha k here because uh, the step size can change every iteration. Now let me draw another uh, simple example. This doesn't even work. This doesn't, so this simple try is we require, actually, so uh, reduction condition, it's called a reduction condition. So basically it says our function ha has to be at least have a reduction at our next iteration. So this, this does not even work for quadru quadratic function. Think of a quadratic function. So now let me let me just draw this uh, x versus f of x. Okay. So one one dimensional example. This is not a phi. This is just x versus f of x. Okay. So for example, so if we're at here, okay, if we take the derivative, so here, here the function is increasing, right? Here the function is increasing. Think about this is x zero. Here the function is increasing, which means the, the gradient, or say just the derivative is positive. Then the negative gradient is negative. Okay, so. So in this 1D case, it's this. So at this point, at this, uh, um, at this x is zero. Um, so we have our negative gradient or say the negative f prime is negative. So if we do a line search, so we don't do exact line search. We just set our step size. We may like reach here, okay? So this is our goal, but we may, it's perfectly possible we reach here. It's still a reduction, I mean. So it's less than that, x1. Now at x1, this function is decreasing, okay? The function is decreasing, which means f prime is less than zero here. So negative f prime is positive. And then our search direction becomes toward the positive direction. So then we do this. And it's perfectly possible we do this. If we only require, we have a reduction and this, could perfectly be possible. So this is, my, my point here is this is inefficient. So first try, so this, this uh, reduction condition is inefficient. It's because for the quadratic function, it's perfectly, we can have this. And think about CG or even steepest descent. So CG, um, for a quadratic function, it converges to the true global minimum quadratic in at most n steps. So n is uh, the dimension. 
But here we may, so for example, if we apply CG, if we apply CG to a one dimensional quadratic function, we reach here in one step, okay? So no matter your initial guess, where your initial guess is, if we apply CG to a one dimensional function, we, we will reach here in one iteration. I mean, this is actually implied uh, in the homework five, problem number one. So if uh, our um, initial guess subtract the, um, the truth minimum is one of the eigenvector, then we reach like uh, our minimum in next iteration. Um, in 1D, it's actually uh, because uh, every difference is an eigenvector, which means it reach our global minimum in one iteration. But as we can see, so my point is this is inefficient because it is not even good for the simplest case. So now let's continue. And I wanna use this, uh, so I wanna use this, uh, um, I wanna use this diagram again. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna erase my, um, I'm gonna erase some of the caption here. So since, uh, since I was in a hurry today, so I didn't bring my notes. So some notation wise, it may, it may be different from the real notes, but uh, I will try to uh, find my uh, real notes back and uh, uh, to match today lectures notation. So we are. Uh, okay. So that is inefficient. So our goal is to find, is to find a practical, but also good, like in exact line search. So our goal is to find alpha find a good alpha a good step size uh, su uh, such that without without solving so without solving this uh, line search minimization problem okay so th this is our goal We want to find, I, I, I would say a good alpha, let's say, uh, let me, we can change actually this. So we want to find a reasonable alpha so that uh, we get a reasonable reduction uh, to our function. So again, so we start from phi of zero. So we start from phi of zero and we march in the right direction. So we solve our uh, minimization for alpha is greater than zero. And uh, uh, so now what we do is we can require, let me, let me name this, uh, so one, two, three, four, let me name this panel number six. And in panel number five, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna write a condition. Um, this is panel number five. So the first condition we like to propose is called a Miho condition. So it's of course discovered by this guy Amiho and uh, um, what this condition says is for 
a constant C1 for constant C1 um, between 0 and 1 our function value at the next iteration our function value at the next iteration has to be less than or equal to the function value at the current iteration plus C1 alpha K gradient of F of X K. Uh, let, me, let me use uh, um, still. Let me use dot product. Okay. So I think the textbook uses a gradient transpose this one. So let me still use dot product. In the in the simplest case, in the simplest case, uh, when PK, this search direction is the negative gradient. So this actually is a very simple linear function of, uh, of alpha k, okay? So or alpha, so, um, so think, uh, let me, six, so seven. And again, let, let's uh, uh, recall in the simplest case, so not in the CG case, okay? So in the simplest case, our search direction is just our negative gradient direction. It's where the function decreases fastest at the current iteration. So without considering the previous iterations, that one, the right-hand side, is actually a linear function of alpha k. And this linear function is actually is the function value at uh, current iteration subtract, subtract the C1 alpha k the magnitude of the gradient, okay? So it's an inner product of a vector uh, with itself. We get the magnitude, we get the norm, we get the little L2 norm of this vector. This is a positive C1 and the positive, as we can see here, this is a linear function in alpha K. So if we draw a line, it may be something like this. Okay. So this is our L alpha. And we have to choose alpha k so that, so this condition says, the Miho condition says, we choose alpha, we choose alpha k such that the function value at the next iteration is below this line, okay, is below. Seven. If we use this figure, so that, that's a, that's an interpretation of a Miho condition, and uh, um, 
So we use this figure. Again, we're back to this figure and we draw this line. So keep this in mind, the slope of, uh, um, the slope of this is not uh, like the slope here. So the slope of this linear function is not this slope. First, it has to multiply the magnitude of a gradient of f, and then we have a zero to one constant. So C1 is some constant to be determined. So it's what we call, uh, in optimization theory, we, we call it a hyperparameter. So it's not a parameter of our model, it's a parameter of our optimization method. And uh, um, so this is a constant to be, to be uh, like chosen. And we get this line. And uh, what uh, this uh, Miho condition is uh, f at next iteration has to be below this line. So which means so this part is good, okay? So this part is good. And uh, um, So uh, this part is good, okay. And uh, hopefully we don't reach here. The intuition of the Amiho condition is our line search should at least perform, should at least perform as good as a vanilla gradient descent. So vanilla gradient descent is we just don't do any line search. We just choose our step size small enough, so um, that's it. Okay, so this is uh, this is our um, Amiho condition. As we can see, this, this is uh, uh, this is not enough. Like, like I said, for example, in the vanilla gradient descent. So let me use a new panel for this. So there is a, a second but. So when we say but, something bad will happen. Like I said earlier, in the vanilla gradient descent, so recall in GD, by GD, I mean, it's just uh, like uh, our simplest, we just choose We don't care like how much reduction we will have. We just care a little reduction is fine. Okay. We, we also keep this in mind when we prove great and decent, we also use like uh, somewhat, uh, we have to choose alpha kind of small. So what happens here is uh, alpha can always be chosen small enough so uh, such that uh, a Miho condition is met. If we choose alpha too small, it's like we're standing still. So I believe if you have experimented various, so there is actually one step size to choose in a Newton CG method um, for the BO function. I'm not sure if you have tested various step size yet, but uh, for BO function, it's actually very hard. So if you try different initial point, um, BO function, the method, like I said, Newton CG is already a state of art method, but still it takes quite, quite a few, actually quite a few iterations to reach near the, um, 
the global minimum. Like I said here, we can always choose a, a step size small enough so that uh, a Miho condition is met. And uh, a Miho condition is like a first order condition. This, the second one is uh, actually, so then, then we propose seven, eight. Then we propose another condition. So let's keep that panel. And uh, let me erase this panel. The second condition is called a curvature condition. Um, and we have to choose another constant C2. That's between C1 and the one such that such that the gradient at the next iteration, okay. Dot product with this PK, which is our search direction is greater than or equal to C2 times the gradient of uh, f of x k dot product with p k. Okay, so again, I wanna um, I wanna remind you guys in the simple case. When PK is negative gradient, when PK is negative gradient, this term is negative, okay? When we say this is greater than that, we want this to be less negative. And before we interpret, we, we try to interpret this condition so before we try to inter interpret this condition, so we'll use this figure again. So we use this figure again. And uh, let me raise this, uh, uh, this L alpha. But let me keep um, this good range here. I'm not sure if we have um, not if we have a colored chalk. Apparently not. Okay, but it's fine. Um, so let, let, let's keep this diagram here. But keep keep in mind the these two range are good for a Miho condition, and let's uh, so let's add. A prefix A, say, so this is uh, for Amiho condition, this part is good. For Amiho condition, this part is good. So now let's uh, try to interpret the meaning of the curvature condition. Before we interpret, let's first look at what is a phi of A, phi of alpha. And alpha is greater than zero. So for alpha, so alpha is greater than zero. Phi of alpha, phi of alpha is all the positive, uh, all the possible function value along the search direction. So sometimes we, we are in luck 
we hit the global minimum of f, or sometimes we are good lucky enough, we hit the global minimum of this function. Sometimes we're in bad luck and we get here. So, but anyway, we have to solve this, uh, this problem. We have to uh, take the derivative of this. When we do exact line search, let's analyze it, okay? So when we take derivative of alpha, this is a composite function. We have to take derivative of the outer function, which is a gradient, okay? And gradient of f evaluated at this point. And then dot product with the derivative of alpha in the inner variable. This has nothing to do with alpha. So it's only our search direction is alpha. So it's uh, the gradient of f dot product with um, pk. And we're almost there. You can see it's the gradient of f xk plus alpha pk dot product with um, pk. So this is panel number 10 and I'm gonna reuse panel number nine. Um, Okay, let me erase this. Let me check if uh, the remote student can still hear me. Okay, so nothing in the chat, so I assume it's good. Now we look at uh, um, the right hand side and the left hand side of this inequality. The right hand side, first of all, the right hand side is just a prime prime of zero. Right? I mean, C2 times five prime of zero, zero. So we plug in alpha equals zero there, we'll get right hand side, which is a de derivative of alpha um, at alpha equals zero. When alpha equals zero, we're here, okay? So we're here. It's basically the slope. Now this is the slope. So now this is the slope of, uh, of our uh, phi prime of alpha. I mean, it's a value, but I'm drawing a line having this as a slope. It's a negative number, by the way, because uh, as we can see, it's sure it's negative. Okay, so it equals, it equals uh, um, negative gradient of f square. So it's negative. And if we multiply, so at zero, if we multiply a C2, so C2 is, is less than one. So it makes it less steep. So let's, uh, let me redraw this line, okay. If a line has a slope of a phi prime of zero, it would be tangent to this curve at this point. But we multiply a C2, which is between zero and which is between C1 and one, it's less than one, it makes it less steep. So that's why we may have something like this. Okay, so this is a C1. So a slope, I'm sorry, a line with slope C1 times C2, my bad. C2 times phi prime of zero. So that, that's, so that dotted line represents a line with the slope of a right hand side. Now let's look at the left hand side. Left hand side actually is exactly the expression over there. 
So it's phi prime at alpha k. So alpha k is basically uh, the step size we want to choose. Okay. So it says what? It actually says um, this is a negative number, right? In order that the slope is greater than a negative number, it means the slope is less steep than the slope of like C2 times this guy. So it says, so actually it's less steep than the right hand side. Okay, so we're gonna choose an alpha so that it's less steep. So our slope is less steep than um, the right hand side. Okay, so I'm almost finished. Um, now, if we draw on the picture, so what we have, so for example, so we'll have the same slope here, okay? We'll have the same slope here. After that, keep this in mind, when our slope becomes positive, it's a good thing for the curvature condition. So it's actually okay, this part. Um, as long as our slope is not too negative. So this is, uh, if we draw a line with this slope, okay, so we'll have here. And before this point, the slope is greater than this slope. And then we have another maybe here, okay. And then we have another slope maybe here. Now, if we check the slope condition, if we check the slope condition or say the curvature condition, this part is bad because it's too steep. So this part is actually good. So let me name it C good. And this slope is too steep. We want our slope to be less steep than where we started. So actually this part is good. So C good. Okay. And now we wrap up today's lecture. So we wrap up today's lecture. So basically what we today we learned is called Worthy condition. So it's an inexact line search. We choose alpha such that curvature and a Miho condition holds. Actually hold, okay, so we have two conditions. And uh, this is, uh, this basically wraps up today's lecture. So Wolfe condition is we require, we choose an alpha so that the curvature condition and the Amiho condition, they hold at the same time. Now let's uh, come back at uh, um, here. It's basically, so it's intersections of the A good range and the C good range. So now let's look back at our um, function graph again. So A good is from here to here, but C good is only from here to here. So the first intersection is this part. If you, if you have a colored, if you have a colored pen or you have a colored change color on your electronic devices, it's a, uh, it's a best if you use another color. So this is the first, this range or say this range is the first good step size for our alpha. The second one, as we can see here is A good, and here is C good. So it's, uh, it's actually from, from here to here. So 
So these two wedges, oh my God. Okay. So these two wedges are the step size so that our Wolfe condition are meant. If we apply Wolfe condition, so we'll reach here or here. So next time, next time uh, we will uh, we'll, we'll continue. So uh, this in exact, so we'll uh, analyze uh, Wolfe and, of, uh, and we, if we have time, so we'll go through Goldenstein and uh, in exact Newton. So by the way, our Wednesday lecture is our last uh, lecture um, because like I said, because we uh, used one lecture and we move it to the evening so that we could have an evening exam. So uh, Friday lecture uh, is canceled due to we, due to I like to borrow one lecture from you guys. Okay. So that's it for today. Okay. See you.